Last week, we featured one of Marywood's premier men's lacrosse players. This week, we look at one of the top players on the women's side. Get ready, because Beyond the Arch starts right now. She majors in nursing while playing both field hockey and women's lacrosse for Marywood. A graduate of Vestal High School in New York, she made first team all-star lacrosse and second team all-star field hockey. During last year's field hockey season, she played in all 18 games with 16 starts. She scored three goals and led the team with four assists. As a midfielder from the women's lacrosse team, she was named to the IWLCA Boardwalk Region Second Team and Colonial States Athletic Conference First Team. She led the Pacers with 13 free position goals and tied for second in school history with 24 single season assists. I take on Gwyneth Gleason one on one next. You know what, guys? There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea. You've messed up your son's haircut. Mom? Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, work with what you've got. Or C, show solidarity. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. This is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. Remember the first time you picked up a basketball in your hands? Last season, we only scratched the surface in highlighting some of Marywood's most unique student-athletes. Your passion for rugby. Well, who was your influence? He is a man with a busy schedule. I'm your host, Nicolo Manzo, and you're watching the season two of Beyond the Arch. Four, three, two, one. I'm here at the turf field for women's lacrosse practice where I'm about to go one-on-one -on -one with Gwyneth Gleason because, you know, we're keeping it lax at Beyond the Arch. So okay. what's the first shot we're going for? So the elevator shot is when you start low and then you kind of work your way up as you're shooting. Like elevator shot. Off <laughs> <laughs> the crossbar, really, really. We do this again? <laughs> <laughs> Until you make it. Oh wow. 
So behind the back. Extending, you're going behind the back. Behind the back. So I'll have you guys face that direction. I'm gonna roll out a ground ball. Whoever picks up the ground balls on offense, whoever doesn't is on defense, and then the offender is gonna to go to cage to try to score. Oh, okay. You ready? Yeah. Go. Good job. <laughs> Alvin and the Chipmunks want to remind you, bacteria can hide in food and make you ill. Wow. But you can keep bacteria from ruining your day with four simple steps. Clean. I'm waiting for the ring cycle. Separate. Ah. <laughs> Cook. Fire in the hole. And chill. We Chipmunks are notoriously tidy. Check your steps. The road trip to food safety starts at foodsafety.gov. Right, mi cariño. So like I said, everything I learned about cooking, I learned from grandmas and bananas. Shall we go again? Yep. Mix beef with the onions, the onions with the peppers, the peppers with the paprika, the paprika, the garlic, the garlic with the oregano, the oregano with the cumin. Got it? Got it. Throw on the olive, stir, season, stir again, pour out the flour, roll out the dough, make a circle, drop in a fistful of filling, fold over, press down, and ta-da! Hmm. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. You think getting dumped by text is harsh? Try getting dumped by tennis ball. My ex owner drove me out to the woods, yelled fetch, and by the time I bought the ball back, he was gone. Yeah, I was pissed. But the folks at the shelter helped me let go of my anger. I learned coping skills, like taking it to the hole. Boom! Now I'm ready to fetch again. But how about I throw and you run and get it? You're doing great. Let's just, we're gonna try this again, okay? Okay. Wheels, pedals, handlebar, brakes. Sit up straight, keep your weight in the center, keep your eyes on the road, hands on the grips, button the seat. If we feel ourselves falling, what do we do? Just, just keep, keep pedaling. Good girl. Now remember, it's all about balance and steering. Steer with your hands, steer with your body. Steer into the corners and you stay out of trouble. And the bell's your buddy, so go ahead and ding that. All right, you ready? Here we go. Pedal, honey, pedal. There you go, you're a bike rider. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. Welcome back. I'm pleased to be joined by Marywood Field Hockey and Women's Lacrosse athlete Gwyneth Gleason. Gwyneth, thanks for joining us here tonight. Thanks for having me. We're glad to have you here. Um, so let's get started right away with finding out who Gwyneth the person is. That's always what we say. We want to humanize Gwyneth, not just a uh, lacrosse player, as everyone else might see you at <laughs> campus. But um, So let's talk a little bit about how you found your way here to Marywood. Okay. So go ahead. Let's hear it. Oh. Um, no, no, you're good. Go ahead. Okay. Um, well... I got an email from my lacrosse coach and she just saw my game from high school and she emailed me and said, hey, do you want to come for a visit? And I said, sure. I never really heard much about the school. So I came and I went to a clinic and then they asked me if I wanted to play field hockey too because they knew that I did from high school okay. and my coaches are really good friends so they know a lot about, um, they talk a lot about me. So um, we went to, I went to a clinic for field hockey too, and then I just decided to play both. Very nice, so was your decision to come here athletically driven or academically driven? Definitely academically, because I knew ever since I was a junior in high school that I wanted to pursue nursing, so I knew that I couldn't obviously do a higher level of athletics with nursing, it would have been nearly impossible, so I'm trying to juggle both sports with nursing, but right. nursing's my priority. Okay, well, we'll get to your major in a second, because that's a nice segue, but we'll get to your major <laughs> yeah. in a second, but um, what was the recruitment process like? Because you said you recruited for lacrosse then, yeah. right? And then field hockey was just sort of like an added bonus then? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, my field hockey coach just asked me point blank. She was like, do you just want to try it out and see how it goes? And I said, sure. And 
it, the season went really well last year, um, and then I transitioned into lacrosse season, and yeah. So now nursing, as we said, that's your major, so that's, it's interesting because a lot of the athletes we have on here are very medically driven <laughs> people. Okay. So is there is there a tie-in for you? Because we talked to Luke last week, and he said a lot of the reason why he picked a uh, medical sort of major was because of almost his knowledge of the body through sports. Do you mm -hmm. think that contributed to it at all Definitely. for you? Definitely, yeah. I took anatomy in high school, and it was something that I automatically fell in love with. And I think that, like, learning so much about the body definitely helped me decide that I wanted to pursue in the medical field. So nursing was definitely um, a perfect fit. So tell us about the major here. What's the program like? Do you like it? Oh, I love, yeah, I love it. Um, I go to clinicals every Friday, and I get to experience things that normally people wouldn't be able to see. Um, I get to go one-on-one -on -one with patients. I get to talk to different nurses about you know, their problems. Obviously, I get to go on rotations. And it's just a whole different experience, and I love it. Well, I can say one thing for certain. I think your one-on-ones are probably a little more serious <laughs> than the one-on-ones I have with the athletes, <laughs> so it's probably a little bit more serious. But um, yeah. So it's a pretty involved major. That's the other thing that's interesting about all these athletes picking medical majors is because yeah. they're, they're involved. So how do you juggle? How do you, especially with you, I mean, two sports plus that. So how is that all coming yeah. together? Um, definitely, it's always a schedule for me, but I like that because it's it keeps me structured and I always have something planned to do. So I'll be going to my game on Saturday. So that means that I have to plan ahead and get my homework done so that I know I can't do it on that Saturday. So then I'll finish it up on Sunday. And Weekends are usually like when I get all my work done, but I'm usually in the library a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. So do you ever feel like the sports intrudes on your academic life, or do you feel it actually helps you, or um, what do you think? I think it definitely helps me. A lot of people think that when you're in season that you might slack off and not do your work as much. I think it's the opposite, because when I have that little leeway where I'm not doing anything when sports are over and it's finals week, I find myself, you know, watching Netflix, slacking yeah. off a little <laughs> bit because I don't have a schedule, mm -hmm. and so it definitely helps me a lot. And I think that that's important when you have something to do and you're definitely keeping yourself structured and on a schedule. So what are your goals in the field of nursing? Definitely to pass nursing school first. That'd be good. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then um, moving on to uh, eventually after college, I'll work somewhere around here for about a year and then go on maybe be a traveling nurse after that, mm -hmm. um, just around the United States, maybe do some mission trips. But as far as that, I'm not really sure about my specialty yet. Okay. But, um, yeah. Do you have any thought about tying it in athletically at all? Or is there any way you could possibly do that or no? Maybe. Um, I, I've thought about coaching. Okay. Uh, like, way down the line, though. <laughs> but mm -hmm. definitely, sure. like, when maybe I'm older, I might, like, pick up, like, a rec league for lacrosse or field hockey just to coach little kids. So any other interests besides athletics? And like in your free time, what do you like to do? Um, I like to be with my family a lot, my mm -hmm. friends. Um, I love my dog. So What's I'll your dog's name? Crosby. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, I just love to be around people. So definitely love to hang out with my family and my friends. But yeah, that's usually what I do in my downtime. I mean, I could imagine you probably don't have that much downtime either because <laughs> of the two sports and the work. Yeah. And the, so yeah, I, I understand that. Um, yeah, when I go home, I'm resting. <laughs> I don't blame you. No problem. <laughs> so how about, um, do you, did you follow sports as a kid or do you follow sports now or are you just more I so? I followed sports a lot as a kid, yeah. Um, all of my siblings, I have all older siblings and they all played hockey. So I was the little sibling following them around, watching them play and that's what kind of inspired me to love sports. And my dad, of course, he played a lot of sports in high school, so mm -hmm. he definitely he pushed us a little bit to just pursue in sports because he like he loves how structured mm -hmm. it keeps you and yeah. So I, I have to ask, was the Crosby Sidney Crosby? <laughs> um, that was my brother. He just liked the name. It wasn't really tied into Sidney Crosby, okay. but yeah, we de everyone was like, "Oh, you named your dog after Sidney Crosby." <laughs> yeah. No, we just like we like the name. So okay, well, that's cool. This I, I, he's one of my favorite athletes growing up, actually. Really? Yeah, I'm a Penguins fan, so he was one of my favorites. Yeah, I love him. And Derek Jeter than Sidney Crosby. Oh, okay. <laughs> but um, <laughs> so do you have any favorite teams or anything, or in your family? Um, or? Well, my sister, she was a fan of the Blackhawks on yeah mm -hmm. the NHL, and I really like Jonathan Taves because no, sure. I think he's he's really cool. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and, um 
Patrick Kane. Mm -hmm. I really like Patrick Kane too. But yeah. So a hockey family for sure then. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. All right. Lacrosse um, too. Yep. <laughs> So, if you could have that, this is, I don't know, this is a question we like to ask here. I okay. think it's shall talk a lot about somebody's personality. Yeah. If you could have dinner with three people, oh boy, living or dead, who, who would they be and why? Um, living or dead? Oh my gosh. Well, hmm, this is an interesting. Question. Okay. Um, I think Santa Claus. Um, That's good. Because he's, you know, his imaginary count. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think Michael Jackson's cool. Yeah. So Michael Jackson and um, Ellen. <laughs> nice. Yeah. It's a very eclectic group. It's nice. They're all different. Yeah. So now, what about, could you give me one athlete? One athlete. Um, Jonathan Tate. That makes sense then, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're going to transition briefly into your, you as an athlete now, because okay. I think we have a good idea of you as a person. So yeah. then we'll continue that after the break, but we'll get into your athlete stuff starting right now. So. You're a multi-sport athlete, and I feel like at times they're sort of under attack in a way in the media. Like people sort of discourage multi-sport athletes. Um, they're rare nowadays. So, mm -hmm. what is it like to be a multi-sport athlete here? It, it, how much different do you think it is to, than being a single-sport athlete? I think it's really different because sometimes I have to sort of switch my brain, and when I step onto the field hockey, um, when I'm w getting ready for mm -hmm. season. Um, I sort of have to just like remind myself of all the rules and it sounds really silly because you obviously should know the rules of your own sport but it's just like all a mental thing you have to know basically what you're doing in that moment and you just basically have to get the job done I don't know <laughs> yeah, I get it yeah. <laughs> well my conversation with Gwyneth continues when we come back you know what guys there's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea. You've messed up your son's haircut. Mom? Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, work with what you got. Or C, show solidarity. Oh, thank you, baby. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. This is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Remember the first time you picked up a basketball in your hands? Last season, we only scratched the surface in highlighting some of Marywood's most unique student athletes. Your passion for rugby. Well, who was your influence? He is a man with a busy schedule. I'm your host, Nicola Manzo, and you're watching the season two of Beyond the Arch. Four, three, two, one. Welcome back to the show as my conversation with Gwyneth continues. All right, so we just were scratching the surface about your athletic career here, so we're going to keep that going here. Okay. And we'll stick with the multi-sport theme for just a minute here because I was telling you before about how a lot of people I don't think really understand multi-sport athletes or they try to like almost attack it in a way. So what do you think about the arguments, I'm sure you've heard it, the argument about playing more than one sport sort of hampers an athlete because you can't really devote yourself to that one sport. Well, what do you think about that? Um, I think that that's kind of like people just having their own opinion and I don't know I don't think it's really anyone's place to tell other people how they should live and I've gotten a lot of comments like that sometimes where they're like oh nursing and field hockey and lacrosse wow like, and yes obviously if it gets too hard 
I'm going to have to, um, you know, we'll see how it goes. But um, for right now, um, I've been managing and just fine. And, you know, I think that the allegations that people say about, you know, multi-sport athletes, I think it's just, you know, they need to mind their own business, <laughs> basically. Yeah. So. Well, I, I, that's understandable. And I'll tell you what, the numbers definitely back up your claims that you're managing just <laughs> fine. Because I, I can assure everyone she is managing just fine. But um, is there any overlap between the two sports for you, like either in schedule or in the way you play them? Is there an overlap? Um, sometimes if I'm like doing an event, like just this morning, um, I went for field hockey to read to little kids at Robert Morris Elementary. So oh, sometimes nice. even though I'm in lacrosse season, mm -hmm. like I'll do things for field hockey and vice versa. But <clears throat> yeah, I think that definitely sometimes there are other um, events that I need to go to for either sport. So, but it's definitely manageable because my coaches are understanding. They know that I'm <coughs> I need to be a part of both teams. So that's great. I mean, I think that's actually something we've seen on the show too already this semester. Is the coaches are pretty pretty cooperative with that. Yeah, so that's good. definitely. Now, how different are your approaches between the two sports? Because I feel like you kind of probably have two separate mindsets almost so how mm -hmm. differently do you approach it both physically like the preparation and mentally how different is your approach or um, similar I don't know it, yeah it's kind of the same honestly um, I just tell myself that you know same same goes for field hockey and lacrosse I have to work hard to push myself and practice definitely practicing makes a lot of difference because you know I've seen with college athletes especially that if you don't work hard then you're not going to play and that's just how it is so definitely need to put in the work and keep a good mindset and you'll be just fine. When did you start playing each sport? I started lacrosse in first grade and field hockey in ninth. Well, so, this so pretty newcomer to field hockey. That's pretty interesting. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> so you learn, like, how do you explain your just, I mean, excelling at it now in such a short period of time? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I was saying earlier how I played hockey when I was little, mm -hmm. but only f briefly. And so I think that might have transferred in a little, but it was different because I was left-handed for hockey, right. but then they told me when I started field hockey that they don't make left-handed sticks. Oh boy. So I had to <laughs> switch to right-handed for field hockey. Uh -huh. So I think that definitely helped me with lacrosse a little with having to use both hands, but yeah. Do you have a mentor in either sport or someone that you, that kind of took you in and sort of taught you the sport? Um, a lot of my coaches in the past, I think, for field hockey, my coach, uh, Coach Sachs in high school, <coughs> she pushed me a lot. She taught me a lot about the game, and she really helped me because I was obviously a newcomer. So she definitely gave me a lot of good advice. And for lacrosse, I think my other coach would be um, Todd Mansfield. He taught me a lot about the sport, and he gave me a lot of good advice along the way. Has your view of the sport changed at all since like high school to college or when you were little has it has it changed like do you still like it just the same or is it like which an one well, <laughs> see, that's, well i guess either one it applies to both but um i guess what i'm saying is like is there more pressure is it more of a job now than it was or no i think it's just as fun a lot of my friends are on both teams so we have a lot of fun but we work hard at the same time so it's definitely you know there's some times where we really need to buckle down and, you know, work hard at practice, but I think that it's a lot of fun. So I, I said a brief. I said before I talked to Luke McFadden last week, and he mm -hmm. told me that there was a big difference in the sports that were really the top sports where mm -hmm. he was from, which is Connecticut, and yeah. here. And you just told me before actually that it's kind of the same thing. So yeah. Are these two sports like top level sports where you're from or? Um, I think lacrosse is more popular mm -hmm. around where I'm from, but um, definitely field hockey. There's a lot of teams in New York too, but um, hockey's really popular because it's up north. So yeah, I think that definitely, I think that's why field hockey found its way more up north because hockey was so big. All right. So lacrosse last year, I mean, as your freshman season it was truly an incredible season 43 goals 24 assists 67 points so she really burst onto the scene here you burst on thank the you scene. so <laughs> what was that like I mean a freshman year just uh, taking by taking it by storm and was that, <laughs> was that a relief was it it was fun it was a lot <laughs> of fun yeah um I don't know I think like the first time I realized that like I had like a role on the team was like my first scrimmage 
where it was just like a really good feeling game where you just you have that moment where you're like wow I'm I'm fitting in I'm doing well it's just like it's a really so sort. let's transition quickly because their interviews coming to an end here okay. about the upcoming season for lacrosse now I know field hockey in the playoffs you guys lost to Gabrini and then per usual lacrosse <laughs> actually same fate so yep. I mean be honest are you just chomping at the bit right now to get a shot at Cabrini or how is it yeah um definitely <coughs> um I think that they're they're definitely our top competitor and everyone always gets a little bit nervous but I think that we just need a new mindset we need to go in there with you know the basically that we want to win and that we're going to do what we need to do the little things to make it happen and last year I think in our final game it didn't really show didn't re like reflect what we were all about because we did get crushed but um, this year I think we're all just really excited mm -hmm. and April 21st oh, so home game the dates already <laughs> <Be in> there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're all ready. that date circled then right oh right. yeah so highlighted is it more of a mental thing or a physical thing or what is it is it just a mental stumbling block, I think it's think? mental because we've been putting in a lot of work uh, physically but I think it's all a mental game you just got to go in there with the right mind and just yeah okay so then really quickly this will probably be one of the last questions here you guys got off to such a fast start 19 forge the other day first first game hat trick for you so congratulations <laughs> thank you um you picked a second in the CSAC poll I'm pretty sure I saw so oh, I didn't know that so there you go so <laughs> um what, what what's going to happen with the team this year what can we expect to see from the women's lacrosse team you're going to expect that we're going to win and we're going to do well and we're just going to have fun with it but we're also going to you know bring a lot to the table all right <laughs> when we come back I tell you what to expect next week Mix the beef with the onions, the onions with the peppers, the peppers with the paprika, the paprika, the garlic, the garlic with the oregano, the oregano with the cumin. Got it? Got it. Throw in the olive, stir, season, stir again, pour out the flour, roll out the dough, make a circle, drop in a fistful of filling, fold over, press down, and ta-da! Hmm. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. You think getting dumped by text is harsh? Try getting dumped by a tennis ball. My ex-owner drove me out to the woods, yelled fetch, and by the time I bought the ball back, he was gone. Yeah, I was pissed. <laughs> but the folks at the shelter helped me let go of my anger. I learned coping skills, like taking it to the hole. Boom! Now I'm ready to fetch again. But how about I throw and you run and get it? You're doing great. Let's just, we're gonna try this again, okay? Okay. Wheels, pedals, handlebar, brakes. Sit up straight, keep your weight in the center, keep your eyes on the road, hands on the grips, button the seat. If we feel ourselves falling, what do we do? Just, just keep, keep pedaling. Good girl. Now remember, it's all about balance and steering. Steer with your hands, steer with your body. Steer into the corners and you stay out of trouble. And the bell's your buddy, so go ahead and ding that. All right, you ready? Here we go. Pedal, honey, pedal. There you go, you're a bike rider. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. I want to thank Gwyneth for coming tonight. Next week, track and field and cross country athlete David Haynes is here. As always, I would like to thank you for watching. Head over to TV Marywood's official YouTube page to watch full episodes of the show. Be sure to follow TV Marywood on Twitter and like us on Facebook. From everyone at TV Marywood, have a great night.